What's going on coders? Today, I want to talk to you about the basics of containerization in virtual machines. My goal is that by the end of this video, I want you guys to understand the difference between the two. I'm Jameson, and let me take you on a wonderful journey through the world of cloud. So to start off, let me ask you guys a question. What exactly are virtual machines and containers? In your own words, just, uh, you know, think to yourself for a second, what do these things mean to you? And how do you think we use them today? A virtual machine and a container are both ways to create and run multiple environments on a single physical machine. But they differ in their approach to isolation and resource allocation. A virtual machine is an emulation or virtual instance of a physical machine, including a virtual CPU, memory, storage, and network interfaces. Each virtual machine runs its own operating system and applications, which are isolated from other machines and the host operating system. A container, on the other hand, is a lightweight and portable way to package an application and its dependencies. Containers are created and managed by a container engine such as Docker or Podman, which provides an API to interact with the containers. Ultimately, the choice between virtual machines and containers depends on your specific use case and requirements. Okay, so for example today, let's go ahead and set up a virtual machine together. For our virtual machine, we'll go ahead and use Oracle VirtualBox, which is a popular virtual machine provider. And I'll go ahead and walk you guys through the steps of setting up a virtual machine. Let's go ahead and start. So the first thing we'll need to do is go ahead and hit this new, and that will go ahead and bring up the prompt for creating a virtual machine. Okay, and you'll see with our prompt here, it is asking us to go ahead and choose a name for our new virtual machine, as well as what operating system we'd like to use. For example today, let's go ahead and create an Ubuntu image machine. Okay, and I'll go ahead and name this to test. And you'll see here it's already kind of picked out some of the uh, materials that we're going to use. It's already figured out that we're going to be using Linux and from the name Ubuntu it's already picked out the Ubuntu 64-bit version. And for our machine folder I'll go ahead and just pick the common folder that I like to use. Next it's going to prompt you for what how much RAM you would like to allocate. I will go ahead and just stick with the standard 1024. If we hit next, it's going to prompt us for a hard disk. So what you can do for this is actually mount a pre-existing hard disk, uh, which will enable you to actually access information from a previously created virtual machine, which is incredibly useful for developing or sharing some sort of um, basic hardware structure. But for today's example, I will go ahead and just create a new hard disk. And we'll pick a VHD virtual hard disk. And we'll make it dynamically allocated. Okay. Awesome. Next, it's going to ask where I would like to save it and how much space I would like to allocate for this. Let's go ahead and do 10 gigs and create. Okay, awesome.
Okay, awesome. And with that, you'll see here, our test machine has been created. So to go ahead and start that up, all I have to do is double click, or if you press the start button, that'll also start it up. Okay, next it's gonna prompt us for what ISO we'd like to use, and we'll go ahead and use the Ubuntu ISO that we're already provided using um, some of the preset virtual box uh, conditions. Go and start. And once we're started up, you'll see that our virtual machine has started to boot. We'll go ahead and give this process a little time and see what happens. Okay, great. It looks like our virtual machine has fully booted up. Now let's go ahead and log in for the first time. Oh, looks like it's still booting a little bit. Give it another minute or so. Awesome, looks like our virtual machine has fully booted up and now it's prompting us to install Ubuntu. So during the first startup of the machine, it'll act as if you're actually setting up a new Ubuntu I, uh, computer. So essentially, when you start up a virtual machine for the first time, it'll uh, prompt you to go through all these setup instructions like you're setting up a new computer or a new operating system because we actually are. Let's go ahead and proceed. If we start with install Ubuntu. And we'll go ahead and pick English for our layout. Next, let's go ahead and go through with a minimal installation. We don't really need the web browser utilities or office software that uh, comes with the normal installation. So let's go ahead and continue on with the minimal. We'll also, you know what, we'll keep the, we'll deselect the download updates. We don't particularly need them for this example, but they're always uh, useful to have and we'll keep these unselected as well. So let's go ahead and continue. Okay, awesome. Now, once we continue, let's go ahead and earn a risk disk and install Ubuntu. Since we're playing around on a virtual machine, we shouldn't really need to worry about um, saving anything right now, since this is kind of just sort of isolated uh, from the rest of our host machine. Okay, that's fine. We'll go ahead and continue from there. Okay. Great, next it will go ahead and prompt us for a location. Let's go ahead and pick New York for our time zone. And now let's continue. For my computer name, I will go ahead and name it. You know what, we'll just go ahead and name it test. Typed in a little bit too much there. Okay, awesome. We'll pick test, test for the username. And for my password, let's go ahead and put that in. And we'll log in automatically. Okay, now let's continue. Okay, it looks like that proceeded smoothly. So now the virtual machine will go ahead and go through the actual 
installation process it needs to install all the um, required files for Ubuntu. We'll go ahead and skip forward a little bit and go to the end of this installation. Okay, awesome. It looks like our installation has completed, so now we'll go ahead and restart. You'll see, interestingly enough here, it uh, actually only restarted the um, internal virtual machine, not the external uh, running window. That's because uh, the virtual machine kind of is isolated as its own infrastructure. So whenever we restart the machine, uh, we can either restart this window uh, or the actual virtual virtual machine layer, or we could restart the um, uh, virtual machine application, which is uh, running Ubuntu right now. Uh, so what we did just now was restart the virtual machine application and not the um, virtual box. Okay, now that it's loaded up, we'll go ahead and skip this account setup. We will not worry about that. And yeah, sure, let's send some system info. We don't need that. And let's go ahead and skip that for right now. So right now, you'll see here, this is my virtual machine fully set up. Uh, and it acts like its own little uh, Ubuntu desktop environment. Uh, if you'd like, I can click around. You'll see here it has its own file structure. And if we go to applications, it'll pull up uh, its own Ubuntu application center. And uh, let's go ahead and skip that for right now. Yep, that's fine. And it's just going, uh, going ahead and updating for a second. But we can come back to that. Let's go ahead and go to files. You can poke around at desktop, download. You'll see nothing here is actually stored because this is our first run. But let's go ahead and go down here to our applications, which will be the interesting part. And for this, you can go ahead and remind me later. Go back to our applications and we'll open up the terminal. And if I were to run a couple commands, you'll see here, even on the terminal launch, here is the test user that I created, along with just a name, test virtual box. And the interesting thing is virtual machines will typically know that it's um, a virtual machine. Uh, so in this instance, it already knows that it's a virtual machine running off a of virtual box, which is pretty cool. Uh, so if I wanted to go ahead and run a command, all I would really have to do is just run it like I would on any Linux machine. Uh, let's go ahead and run a pwd command, and you'll see I'm in my test user's home directory. If I run a who am I, I am currently logged in as that test user. And if I go ahead and run a host name, you'll see that I even have my own isolated test uh, virtual box host, which is pretty cool. And I guess that, that's about it for this example for today. Um, let's go ahead and shut down our virtual machine. And another nice feature with um, virtual machines is that you have multiple options whenever you want to shut down your machine. So what we can do and what I will do for this example is go ahead and save the state of this machine, meaning that whenever I decide to relaunch this uh, test virtual machine, it'll go ahead and just launch it from this um, instance in time. So it'll bring up the terminal, it'll have all the commands that I had previously run, run uh, memorized, which is really nice. Uh, we also do have a couple other options like send the shut down, send the shutdown signal, which would pretty much just shut down the um, virtual machine. Uh, 
obviously, and we also have power off the machine, which would just um, shut down the virtual box completely. But in this instance, let's go ahead and do save machine state. Okay, and that should have shut down properly. And that's it for today's example. Thank you guys for joining in. Thanks again for tuning in. And if you'd like this, click on one of the other links to check out another cool video. I'll see you guys again.